All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm sitting in my step stool because my roommate who owned the chairs moved out, so we're a little bit limited in what we have for the studio today. Um, but yeah, uh, no big updates on the tank, unfortunately. It's dirty, it needs a water change, uh, normal stuff. Got a new fish right here. Um, this one's from Chad Davis. Uh, funny story about this guy. It's the one with the uh, big orange blaze. I don't know if you can see him or not, but he's ridiculously dark right now. Um, funny thing about this guy is uh, I drooled over him and told Chad I'd write him a blank check for this fish um, a few months ago when I first saw him. And uh, I didn't really expect Chad to get rid of him, but a few things happened in Chad's tank. He, did, he decided to take a different direction, and uh, I got to pick this guy up. So uh, funny how things work out. So that's pretty cool. I'll get a close-up of him uh, after I'm done with this video. But yeah, um, the reason I'm making this is because I keep getting questions, this one specific question. And I don't see any good videos on this topic. I've seen one good one made by Jay Wilson, and I talked about that earlier, the bloat video. Um, but he didn't really talk about treatments, he didn't talk about quarantine or anything like that. And the question that I always get is, oh my god, my fish stopped eating, what do I do? Or, oh my god, my fish is acting weird, acting lethargic, not eating, coughing, spitting out food, whatever. Um, what do I do? Um, and the answer, the biggest answer to that, and the one I always see that people put off, they always want to treat, they always want to feed peas, or feed, the, what, what medication do I need? Before you even think about medicating your fish, and I know you may have them on hand, and you can medicate them right after this, but you need to get the fish out of the tank, like now, ASAP, because this is caused by stress. And the reason this happens is because you have a dominance chain, and the lowest guy in the dominance chain can be so stressed out because he has no one else to compete with and win against, that he'll just end up getting sick. And I don't know exactly how that works. I tried to find out. There is no scientific literature on the mechanisms behind internal parasites, how they form. There's a little bit, but it's just not that prevalent on the internet. But yeah, um, lowest in the dominant chain, or someone high in the dominant chain who loses his top spot or loses his second spot. Uh, new fish, you know, those guys are stressed. They get shipped for three days in a little box and they're shaken up and they're in their own shit and pissed, you know, for days on end. You know, if shipments get delayed, that stuff can happen. So, biggest thing is remove the fish from the tank so it can't infect other fish because people may say bloat isn't contagious and there's a lot of stupid information out there on bloat. Um, don't listen to it, just listen to this. Bloat is spironucleosis or it's hexmita. Those are the two most common internal parasites. I'm not sure if they're the same thing. I don't know. I've done some research. I, Yeah, but the biggest thing is remove the fish from the tank. Now, how do you treat? You need to treat with clout. Um, a lot of people say treat with like a five times dose of Metro. The bad thing about Metro is it's not water soluble. And the only way that Metro is truly effective is, is if it's ingested. So clout is the best option for soaking your fish because it has a chemical in here. It's not even stated on this bottle. It's just the, uh, I guess the chemistry name of it. It's like tetrified something, but I don't even know. But it's got a water-soluble anti-parasite in here, and my cat is just rustling around the bag back there, sorry. Um, it has a uh, water-soluble anti-parasitic medication in there um, that is very effective. Um, and the reason you want it to be extremely water-soluble is because it has to pass the semi-permeable -perme membrane of the fish's gills. It needs to get into the bloodstream to be effective. So that's the most important part. So that is why this is so effective at soaking fish, because it can get into the bloodstream via respiration. Metro cannot. The molecule is way too big. So the reason Metro is effective for some people is because they pour a quadruple dose in there, and it lays on the sand bed. And fish actually like to sift the sand. So they'll go and take a bite of the sand, which might have Metro in it, and they'll swallow it and then they'll spit the sand out, you know, they'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And that's why I think Metro is successful for some people. But if you have a bare bottom tank or something for your hospital tank and you're trying to treat with that, I've never had any success with like quadruple dosing Metro. Um, the other option is taking an 
a syringe or a pipette or something, and not a syringe with a needle, don't do that. You need to have a small bore extender on there, and you can see a guy treating trophies with that if you type in force feeding Metro. Um, but you can force feed Metro and Epsom salts, a 3% solution to basically flush the fish's intestines out, and that's a great option too. And uh, preventative maintenance for the rest of the tank. So you have $1,000 worth of fish in here right now. That's not my exact number, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at how much money I spend on fish. And that's common practice with African cichlids. But we have Metro Flake here. This is garlic and Metro Flake, and it's extremely effective. The fish love it. And basically, they willingly eat this food with a metronidazole solution in it. So it's preventative for all of your fish that have been exposed to this sick fish. So I highly recommend feeding this after you remove that fish. So they're already being treated. If, in case they have any parasites that have basically started incubating and are ready to multiply and infect, this will kill it. Um, this is probably the most important thing you can have on hand. I quarantine my fish with it for a few days just to make sure that in case they're stressed out, they're not going to have an outbreak with internal parasites. I do put Metro in the tank when I'm quarantining just in case any you know stuff falls to the bottom it might kill them last resort when I'm quarantining I use clout you know as preventative because it does kill everything it's like a shotgun you know it's a shotgun treatment so yeah so that's what you do when you got a sick fish and now are the treatments so I got a sick fish in a bucket right here and he's not very happy because I've been moving him around but I got him out of there and all my fish are fine. I'm not seeing any more signs of sickness. Um, so yeah, first sign of sickness, don't wait. I've waited before, it ended up catastrophic. Um, if you see any abnormal signs, if they skip feeding once, give them one more time. Try to feed them again later that day. If they reject food, just get them out there. I don't care if you have to remove every rock from your tank and do a water change as well, remove them. It's worth the effort because you don't want to lose everything. And on YouTube, I find that a lot of people don't like to talk about the fish they lose, they don't like to talk about negative experiences, and that's sort of a bad thing because it's not very educational. Um, everybody loses fish. If you go and look at certain people's channels, look over the years, if they've been doing this for a few years or two years or something, look at their stock. They don't have the same fish. People lose fish. People lose tanks full of fish. I've seen people lose an entire stock, I've seen people lose three quarters, you know, half just because of a sickness, random. Goes well for a year and boom, all of them are dead. So this is why you need to be very vigilant with your tank, it's the biggest thing. So have a quarantine tank. So you can treat them in a bucket, but get them into a quarantine tank so you can observe them. It's a lot easier, it's through glass. And uh, they're less stressed in a tank. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, any other sign, so you get red velvet, Red velvet's the worst. Uh, if you see any red spots or black spots on your fish, um, get them out of there as well, as soon as possible. That's like a very fast incubating, very fast spreading um, parasite, external parasite. Ick is really no big deal. Um, people like to say crank up the temperature and add salt. Uh, what happens when you crank up the temperature? You lose half of your water's, or more of your water's oxygen capacity. And, um, with the ick attaching to the gills, it lowers the respiratory surface area of the fish. It makes them less efficient at absorbing oxygen into their bloodstream, and then you also half the oxygen. It doesn't really make any sense. You don't have any, any you don't have any, any inverts in here. Um, treat with copper. Um, this silicone really doesn't look too bad when you treat with malachite blue or something similar. So if you have to. I would use that. Um, I'm just not a big fan of the raised temperature and add salt because it dehydrates the fish by adding a lot more solutes to the water than is needed and uh, lowers oxygen content. So I don't think it's very healthy. A lot of people tout it as like a natural way to do it, but honestly, mercury is natural. And do you think that's healthy? Um, there are a lot of chemical alternatives. We are, we aren't you know, 40 years ago in this aquarium hobby. Things have come a long way. So, uh, yeah, ick, I prefer to medicate, bloat, medicate, 
everything else, Medicaid, quarantine. Um, with ick, you don't really have to quarantine. It's already on all your fish anyways. So yeah, but that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm always open to helping people out if they have sick fish. I've stayed up for like hours talking to people and requesting pictures and telling them how to treat stuff. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I should have a better video on bloat coming out. I want to go over the treatments, uh, force feeding and all that fun stuff, but this should be enough to get you guys by um, if you have a sick fish. So yeah, and I'll get you a shot of this new guy. So thanks for watching guys. There he is. Look at him. Very dark. Very cool. Very aggressive. <laughs> See if we can get this back in focus. He's going to come back. This camera isn't the greatest for quickly focusing, but there he is. Yeah, in Chad's tank he was pretty blue, but I think the low lighting is helping. And he's very dark. He's almost black. So... This is a Lithobates Friar Red Cross, I believe. He has a horizontal stripe down the center, so I don't know where he would have gotten that from. Maybe he's something else, but that's just my idea. But he's gorgeous. Gets along. Enough. They're African cichlids. What do you expect? But that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.